Hi, my name is Pablo Erendinger. I'm the CTO of Evers. Today, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating installers using InnoSetup. InnoSetup is a free tool that allows you to create a professional installer with a simple manifest with instructions and create an executable file that you can deploy to any computer. First, we're going to talk about the manifest. The manifest is simply a txt file with a .iss extension that you can edit on any text editor. The manifest have different structures. So let's walk you through this. First one, and this is a personal suggestion, we define the variables that are going to change deploy to deploy. So versions or anything that you want to have an easy access for changing in the future. So we have here in this line, we have the version that will be overridden uh, during the process of building the DLLs that we want to deploy. Then we have the setup section. In the setup section, we define the name of the installer, the name of the folders that we want to create during the installer. It's where the uninstalled folder will be living. Uh, everything here will be written up to the Windows registry. So here's where you set up everything. We define also where we want to deploy the DLLs in this area. It could be anywhere uh, before or inside the setup, but we define it here because it's easy for us to, to check it. We also can define where on the folder structure will be deployed the, the execu executable file that we compile, how will be named by the app name, uh, if, we, if it will be or not compressed, and how's the style of the research. So we are using modern, which is uh, a default one. The next section is called languages. You can deploy your installer on multi multiple languages. Here you define which text each version should be showing. In this case, we only have English. So that's why we have only one. Messages can be also added here. So the, the title of, of the setup can be changed here. It's quite simple. You have this structure. You can just change the versions here. You have a few shortcuts or paths that you can, you can use. Uh, it's like a, a wizard. A wizard allows you to change uh, settings directly by calling like a setup setting and that will use the title of the setup setting to the admin that you define. So the next step and which is the important part is to define where to get the, the binaries or content that you want to deploy and where you want to put it. So here you have files where you have a source that is defining in this in our case uh, a release DLL, and then where we want to put it. Note that we are using here some shortcuts like user path, which is local user uh, path roaming itself. And then we are calling the shortcut that we defined it before, which is here, the Rabbit 2020. You have a few flags that you want to set up, like uh, ignore version, or if you want to copy the folders recursively, and if you want to create new folders during the process of installation. You can repeat that to every single version of Revit if that's how you deploy it. Then if you have a single file, you just do the same procedure, which is the search and then the destination. And at the end, we use icons to define which icon are we going to use to the installer executable. So now we have our manifest complete. So what we have to do now is to compile it. We have two ways. The first way is to use InnoSetup compiler tool, which is batteries included. It has a lot of tons of templates and examples how to use it. You just open the InnoSetup file in this editor, go to compile, which is this icon here, and click on compile. You can also debug your installer uh, by clicking on different steps and doing a run in order to stop on that specific step. Once you have this compiler, you can see here that they have a log with all the steps of what it's doing. You can just run it, run it by clicking on play. Be sure to have this icon here, which is install process. So you can debug install and uninstall from this platform. 
I click on install, I click on play, and that will prompt me to install it. The installer process is this. You can see that we have the definition here of the, of the app name being shown on top of the title. You have the version as we define it in the, in the structure. It's running the tool and just installing. Here I have all the log of what the installer is doing. Uh, just to check if everything is okay. And that will create not only deploy the tool, but to create a registry entry in order to remove this um, installer later in the process if, if we need it. We can also debug that part by just changing the process to uninstall and clicking on play. So you will be prompt to uninstall uh, and the process will occur in your main window. You can see here, the process is done. You have a log of what, what happened during the process and that's it. So this is the one way of doing it. But as you notice, it involves the user clicking on the process. So we have other options, like uh, you want to do it on uh, a pipeline, like uh, GitHub Actions. So this is how we do it right now. We create a class tool, which is just a library that has only one file, which is the InnoSetup file. And uh, we have, we call a reference of InnoSetup. Uh, we have a, a reference DLL that we call, and we have a specific step on post build that looks for a package that contains the tool of InnoSetup. And if the building that we are doing isn't released, it runs that specific script. So what we do is we define this class to be the last one to be built during the release. So it starts with all the versions of Revit. Then once everything is done and built, we run the install class to run. Let's just see how this works. So the process is going to build everything. That's quite fast. There is a, it's a really simple, simple project. And inside the project folder, we have now a folder called installer, as we define it here. In this line, the output there. And we have an app name that is defined from here. And you can see that we have the installer ready to use. This installer now needs to be signed with a, with a key, uh, but it's ready to be deployed. And that's it. How to run this on a pipeline? As we are including the project to build the class and the installer as a simple DLL, every time that you run it on a pipeline, the InnoSetup will be run to create the installer. So there is no extra step that you need to do. And that's it. Now you are able to deploy your tools, whatever you want. Okay, see you next time.